What's good, YouTube? It's Mirrorboy Squiddy back in another Squiddyo. I want to talk about this card for a second. SP Little Knight. This is a revolutionary card. Revolutionary link to that everyone's hyping up with the release of Agov. And I realized that, you know, this card actually has a lot of hidden abilities that uh, it would be fun to make a cool Squiddyo to talk about so we can condense this into one little Squiddyo. You, you guys can kind of play around with the card and see if it comes up in your testing. But effectively, SP Little Knight is a card that is a mixture between almost like a DPE as well as a wind-up rabbit. For those of you guys that actually played during wind-up format, this card does so much for being a generic Link 2 that requires just two effect monsters. With 1600 attack, this is what this card does. If this card is Link summoned using a Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, or Link monster is material, you can target a card on the field or in the graveyard, banish it. Also, your monsters cannot attack directly for the rest of the turn as a mini condition, I guess, which just doesn't really matter. And then the other effect is when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can target two face-up monsters on the field, including at least one monster you control. Banish both monsters until the end phase. These are hard ones per turn. Now, this is obviously a very effective removal. It kind of power creeps out a lot of cards previously, like the Nightmares, Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Phoenix. We don't have to discard a card anymore, and we banish the card from the field or graveyard, which is just nuts. Now, the most logical thing, obviously, is to make this using IP Masquerina during our opponent's turn, so we can actually make use of the banish effect to disrupt them during their turn when they're trying to play. So what you can actually do is obviously activate the effect of IP Masquerina in the main phase, and then make it SP Little Knight, allowing you to banish either a card on the field or in the graveyard. But that doesn't stop there, because while SP Little Knight is actually on the table, it becomes another form of disruption with the effect where it can chain to any uh, card or effect that your opponent activates, and then target two face-up monsters on the field and banish both until the end phase. So it gives you kind of like a pseudo-Farfa-esque effect, which is really, really useful because if our opponent fires off any effect, we can easily chain and just remove another one of their pieces until the end of the turn, which is very, very crucial. And I just love how it banishes a card. Uh, so it gets you like two-for-one value off of just one IP Masquerina during your opponent's turn, which is absolutely incredible. The other thing that you guys actually have to know about SP Little Knight is the fact that it can be used both offensively and defensively. So this card effect does not have to target your opponent's monsters, but you can target your own monsters as well because it says you target two face-up monsters on the field, including at least one monster you control, right? So you can target up to two monsters you control if you so desire. Now, this is really, really interesting because cards like Effect Veiler or Infinite Impermanence, when they do target one of our monsters, we can easily chain the effect of SP Little Knight to banish that target, meaning it will be off the field, so it will be resolving because Effect Veiler loses its target. So this also works for Infinite Impermanence permanence which is just really really crucial there are obviously a lot of powerful cards that actually target in this current metagame and being able to just protect our monsters from that with the help of an sp little knight on the consecutive turn after we maybe banish one of their cards from their field or their graveyard just gives you so much value for a generic link too i still can't get over why they printed this card it's just so nuts i don't know but this is just another cool play that you guys can definitely experiment with doing Another really cool thing is the fact that you can actually protect your monsters by removing them from the field. So it doesn't have to be something that targets, but one of the biggest defenders is obviously evenly matched. So if our opponent goes evenly matched battle phase and the battle phase, and we have SP a little knight as well as another monster, and let's say we don't really want to banish our monsters because we want to have a chance at winning the game, right? So we can actually change the effect of SP a little knight to target one of our own monsters, including SP a little knight itself and then banish them, so that'll effectively null and void the evenly match. We can keep whatever back row or whatever other monsters that we want to keep, and then in the end phase, we get the monsters back, as well as SP Little Knight, so we can use her effect again to dodge any targeting or removal, or use the effect to potentially banish one of our opponent's creatures during our turn when they use an effect, and then from there, we can start playing, you know? So it's just really, really cool that the second effect doesn't restrict us from attacking directly, right? So we're just clearing monster bodies from the board. It allows us to effectively win the game on the consecutive turn, but it's just really neat that it also works intrinsically against evenly matched, which is a popular card that ebbs in and out of the format. So this is just one thing that you guys have to know. Making SP Little Knight allows you to sort of play around that by protecting your monster and bringing it back in the end phase. Now, it might actually be hard to make an SP Little Knight going second when you don't have easily access to Synchros, Fusions, XYZs. 
But lane climbing is one of the most effective ways to actually do this because she does get the effect when you use a link monster to summon her as material. So one of the biggest ways is actually using the charmers because the charmers are really, really easy in that they're effectively a way to link climb, but they are also a link monster themselves as a body. So when we use that to revive a enemy monster, it instantly allows us access to the SP Little Knight. Just like even reviving a non-fusion monster, obviously we have the link in Dark Dark Charmer Gloomy, and then that will just turn on the SP Little Knight. And you know, even just watching a lot of OCD duels, a lot of the duels are actually revolving around this little card because it seemingly creates a vacuum in a mid-range format where this card is coming in and out, in and out every turn, and it's a lot like DPE, you know? Previously, we had to deal with DPE, which is really annoying, but the thing with SP Little Knight is that she actually banishes, so she doesn't even go to the graveyard. There's no dark shenanigans. There is no easy way to deal with this card without something like a Forbidden Chalice or a Forbidden Droplet to get rid of her permanently. But again, the Charmers are just an easy way for you to instantly rank up into the SP Little Knight, and then from there, just take over the game. A lot of people don't actually consider the arrows of SP Little Knight, but this is actually really, really cool, because what happens is when we use the effect to actually banish the SP Little Knight until the end of the turn, she actually comes back in our main monster zone instead of the extra monster zone, right? Because she was reset in that manner. So we can actually put her anywhere we want and take advantage of her arrows. And this is effective against a lot of things in the metagame. I mean, even thinking about the existence of something like a Nightmare Griffin could be a lot of use because then we have an extra utility here in the arrows that are pointing to extra zones, right? So even putting it somewhere like this will allow us to open up spaces to uh, use the effects because that would normally be locked by Nightmare Griffin because we do require monsters to be linked, aka being pointed or pointing to something. So that's just really, really cool interaction there with SP Little Knight. And of course, we can never forget, there are actually clever ways to make usage of the fact that she banishes, because a lot of cards actually like getting banished. Like cards like the Thunder Dragons, we have Thunder Dragon Dark, Thunder Dragon Roar, for example, that each get their effects when they're actually banished, which is really, really cool. Like we're gonna be able to use the effect of Thunder Dragon Roar to summon from our deck. Alternatively, there are some gimmick ones like Necroface even, which allows you to effectively banish the top five cards of each player's deck. So we can continue recycling this, maybe even trying to deck out our opponent while getting pluses like off the Thunder Dragons are on our end. So these are just like really, really cool things that we can definitely take advantage of that I think, uh, I don't know, like they're not really relevant now, but you never know if they're cards that like getting banished, then we can definitely get some additional value out of that. So it's just really, really neat how it synergizes with that. And last but not least, I think there's definitely an honorable mention with the fact that you can kind of interact with the Banish Zone with a lot of the existing cards. I mean, there are not a lot of cards like Levier that are currently in the format, but the existence still means that you could do some clever tricks. Like if you do banish something of your opponents, we can obviously use the effect of Levier to detach and summon it back and use it as our own monster. Alternatively, we do have the existence of Cyframe Lord Omega as well to potentially use the effect during our opponent's standby phase to either return one of their banished cards or one of our own. However, that would mean that we'd probably have to trigger the SP Little Knight during the draw step or a standby phase to get rid of a uh, monster that they control or potentially one of our own that we want to put back in the graveyard to use the effect, right? So they're just like very, very niche ways to take advantage of the Banish Zone as well that I think could be a definite, uh, definitely a thing that you guys should explore as well. So yeah, that's about it all I had for the Squidio. If you guys have any other tips and tricks that we're missing out about SP Little Knight in general, I know there are a bunch of them out there. Let's uh, definitely let us know in the comments below so we can actually know how to maximize usage of this card because I think it's going to be an absolute staple in basically every extra deck moving forward in Yu-Gi-Oh! Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.